guys, today I'm gonna go over the film gear I'm bringing to make my travel films, travel videos, travel vlogs, whatever you wanna call them. It's all right here on the table and it all fits right in my bag from Cecilia, which has proven to be pretty comfortable actually for hiking as well. I'll jump right into it, but before I do, I just wanna say you don't have to use the same gear to make a travel film. I've seen some YouTubers making some pretty good travel videos with just a GoPro or you could just use your phone if you want. The way that you edit something is at least half of your story. I mean, the editing is so important. I do use this equipment for very specific reasons. I've tried many cameras. There's a reason that I'm using this one. There's a reason that I'm bringing a tripod and that I have a drone. So I'm gonna talk about what I have here and the reasons that I'm using it. So let's jump right in. I've got my Lumix GH5. This is the camera that I've been using. It's stabilized is mind-blowing. It has totally changed the game for me. The fact that I can hold this camera in my hands just like this and film without having any support. I don't need a gorilla pod. I don't need a monopod. I don't need it on a gimbal. The stabilizer is so good on this camera. It's what has made me use this instead of my Sony a7R 3 Aside from that, I also really like the fold-out screen. I like being able to talk into the camera, see how I'm framed up, make sure I'm in focus, be able to get low angles, whatever angles I want with this fold out screen is really nice. I also slapped a protective glass on it just like you would your phone. It's important to protect your camera screens as well. And then this eye cup has been really handy, especially shooting outside. It's comfortable. It allows you to see the image really well and I can push it up against my eye and that also kind of adds a little bit of additional support. But yeah, I really, I can be in at 120 millimeters with this lens and it's still not shaking. Actually, I've been in with another lens from 200 to 300 millimeters, still hand holding the camera and I get a steady image. Part of that is the technology of them designing a four third sensor that was small enough to be able to create this insane stabilizer for it in combination with the power iOS lens. The lens has a stabilizer, the camera has a built in stabilizer and they work together and the lens is a Leica 12 to 60 millimeters since it's a crop sensor camera that translates to 24 to 120 millimeters. Great do-it-all normal zoom lens. It's nice to just be able to tell the whole story with just one camera and one lens. I guess you could say a drone is another camera, but sometimes I'll bring a GoPro depending on the trip. Like when I went to Belize, I used a GoPro Hero 7 for the underwater footage. But for the next trip I'm going on to Colorado, I'm not gonna be bringing that with me. I'm just gonna have everything here on the table. For memory cards, I have three 128 gigabyte Lexar memory cards that I'm taking with me. I'm now shooting in HD instead of 4K, depending on the shot. Sometimes I will shoot something in 4K to be able to punch in and post, but for the most part, I'm just shooting in HD now because my content has been, the films have been kind of long. Also, my computer, my laptop doesn't really handle 4K very well right now, so I'd like to upgrade to a new laptop maybe next year, and maybe I'll start shooting in 4K more because right now I have to make proxies, which is kind of a pain. Some extra batteries, some camera batteries, batteries, a charger of course. I'll bring three, maybe four camera batteries with me. Then I have a road mic. I won't have that on all the time. Like if I'm doing a slow-mo scene, it's not going to be recording sound anyway. So I'll just take the mic off and um, for any slow motion sequences that I want to film. For the most part, I'll leave this on. The mic from the camera is okay. This one is definitely better. This one's called the Video Mic Pro. Card reader, which is just a little anchor card reader. You don't have to get this exact card reader. I just like it because look how small it is and it wasn't too expensive. This hard drive is amazing. It's a two terabyte solid state drive from Samsung called the portable SSD T5. Really small and weighs like nothing. Two terabytes. I want to get two of these. They're just pretty expensive, but I will eventually plan on having all of my hard drives be this size and 
this weight. I wanted to go solid state because I've had two of these fail so far and it's not fun. That's why you just gotta keep all your stuff backed up in two places at all times. I will bring a lacy drive as a backup, USB portable charger. I'm not gonna say that you should get this one in particular, but it's great to have a portable USB charger. There's a ton of them. My new suitcase from Away has one of these built into it. DJI Mavic Pro 2. When I upgraded from the original Mavic Pro, I had no idea that the picture quality on this was gonna be like three or four times better. I got this right before I went to Ireland. The quality has been actually so good that I can zoom in and post and create a long lens effect as if I was using a longer lens. So this drone's great. To be honest, I'd rather not even have a drone because it's annoying how like restricted they are and there's so many places you can't fly them. You can't fly them in a national park, national monuments, like state parks. There's just so many rules and regulations and I am a pilot and I fly manned airplanes, so I know all the air spaces, I know all the rules, but it's just kind of annoying finding places that you can legally fly. But here's the thing, it's like, it is an amazing storytelling tool. It gives you these incredible perspectives for your story. That's why I'm taking it with me everywhere I go and I love it. I wanna mention the props, I will take them off. They just come off so easily and just put them right back on. So I've been keeping the props and also the thumbsticks from the controller in a hard sunglass case. These just screw right off and that way when I pack this in my bag or somewhere, it's got a flat surface and you don't have to worry about a thumbstick um, moving around a lot and or breaking and then every time I go fly I'll bring it out and just screw them on real quick it doesn't take long got an extra battery and then also a car charger for the drone the next trip we're going on is a road trip so I feel like a car charger is even more important than having a wall charger and this thing actually charges the batteries pretty quick I should also look into getting a car charger for my Panasonic batteries for my camera some gaff tape it's always nice to have some gaff tape you never know what you might want to use it for it doesn't weigh anything and then also a a carabiner it's always great to have a couple of these maybe I'll want to hang something off my backpack who knows I mean just little things that don't take up any space that you may end up wanting to use last on this table I just have my tripod and I got a Binro carbon fiber I was using a gorilla pod a lot recently switched over to a tripod and here's why the gorilla pod really limited the height that I could get the camera at. and there was a lot of situations where I wanted to get the camera somewhere and wasn't able able to because the gorilla pod just doesn't allow for that so it's going to be great to have a tripod with me that will extend all the way up to chest high if I need it to. It's pretty light because I did get the carbon fiber. I have seen the new hiking tripod from Peak Design, but it's not available for sale yet. So I ended up going with this for now. So that's my gear that I'm using right now. It's always evolving, just like the filmmaking process, always trying to like figure out if I need something or don't need something. I don't buy a lot of things. I try to just stick to what I have for a while. There's no right or wrong. If you just want to use your iPhone or GoPro, that is totally fine. There's reasons that I use what I'm using to make the films that I want to make, but that doesn't mean that this is how you should do it. The most important thing is if you're interested in capturing your trips or starting to make some travel films or whatever kind of videos you're interested in, just start doing it. You have to start somewhere. I started making films about 10 years ago. I've only been YouTubing for a little over a year and a half or so, but but before that, I've made so many commercials and documentary type stuff, music videos, and I've made so much that I just ended up throwing away. That's just part of being an artist, is like failing and becoming better, and I love that about the process. Growing, experimenting, I always have so many ideas in my head. I mean, I could talk about this stuff all day. If you have any questions about any of this, definitely let me know. I'll put some links in the description below to, some, to this gear. I never 
expected these films to like get as much attention as they are so early on. So it's been awesome. It's been really inspiring to make more. I would like to do a lot more of this kind of stuff, educational things, what I'm bringing to go camping, how I'm planning my trips, things like that. So thank you so much for your support because the more I grow this channel, the more I'll be able to spend my time making this kind of stuff I'm really passionate about. So happy that you're on board and I can't wait to share more adventures with you.